Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, October 7th, 2019. Uh, as we enter into winter in Grand Prairie, I would call our meeting to order and uh, ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see the rise the true north strong and free from far and wide o oh canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. Thank you, the National Film Board, for the images of our country, and to uh, alumni of our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'll move into the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon, and welcome to Christmas time coming soon. I move the council adopt the minutes of the city council meeting held Monday, September 23rd, 2019, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Can I get a motion for the adoption of the agenda? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'd move that council adopt the agenda as presented. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the agenda as presented? Again, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well, and that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. Um, pleased to see that we have so many people joining us this, this afternoon, especially during the workday. And uh, so we will start with our delegation portion of the agenda. Um, we would recognize anybody that wished to come forward. You didn't have to let us know in advance that you wish to be here for this portion. Um, and so we're happy to have anybody come and speak. Uh, if you're speaking to an agenda item, please maybe just identify uh, which item it is that you're speaking to. And um, I would welcome anybody that wished to come forward. Who wants to be first? You don't have to race. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, you're no stranger to the delegations. Uh, if you just introduce yourselves, and welcome. Scott Pravitz, and I'm representing the Home Builders Association in Grand Prairie. Uh, Jeremy Walker, and I'm representing UDI Grand Prairie. Welcome. So thank you for allowing us to come here and, and speak today. Um, we are uh, specifically talking about the affordable housing strategy 2020-2030 August draft uh, is that the right okay that'd be item 8.1.1 I don't have the agenda so yeah. got it um, and so specifically we want to talk about the uh, letter that we sent to uh, mayor and council on September 24th um, and in that letter we uh, talk about the affordable housing strategy and so I guess first off we would like to to thank administration for their um, time we met with them uh, numerous times uh, about going over this document so we do um, we do thank Reed and in his group for that uh, they've been very forthcoming with the information um, and I guess the the last meeting that we had with Reed which was in, uh, I think it was September 9th, um, so not even a month ago, it was brought to our attention that the strategy would be going to committee uh, October 1st. At that point, a lot of our concerns uh, we felt weren't addressed with Reed. Um, and we also felt like there uh, maybe 
maybe could have been some more consultation between between our industry and administration on some of these issues that, that were um, not talked about. Um, obviously, we uh, as an industry support the affordable housing uh, needs in, in the city. I think we can all agree on that. Um, we agree there's a necessity for these types of, of strategies. Um, in our letter, we wrote to uh, council and mayor um, towards the end, we talked to, about a couple of the ideas that we had that we could um, um, be able to communicate to the city and administration, um, some uh, viable and proven alternatives to addressing some of the issues with, with affordable housing and specifically what is um, talked about in the strategy. And we were hoping, and we put in that letter that we were hoping to uh, speak to that at the committee meeting on October 1st. And obviously we didn't get that opportunity. And so between the last meeting we had with administration and that committee meeting, we were presented with um, a solution to, uh, or maybe another uh, tool in the toolbox that could address some of these, some of the issues with affordable housing. And we weren't able to, to communicate that to anybody. Um, so we were kind of feel like this might not be the best venue to do that here to get into specifics and details of that, but we do have some ideas and a solution that we think that would work. Um, so I guess from CHBA, Grand Prairie, we're hoping to, that um, the strategy gets uh, um, sent back to administration. And I don't know the, the format that, that has to happen, but we're hoping that it gets sent back to administration and that we can explore some of the ideas that, that we had at uh, greater lengths. Okay. Mr. Walker. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mayor Given and Council. Uh, so UDI and CHB are very supportive of, of affordable housing initiatives. This is a sensitive issue that needs to be looked at with great and significant vigor. While it's imperative that the city of Grand Prairie is not, does not compete with private industry, it is equally important that the city of Grand Prairie is fiscally responsible with taxpayers' funds. All potential solutions need to be explored in order to satisfy as much of the housing need as possible with the least, with the least ongoing tax burden to our community. The local development housing industry has a lot of experience and expertise to offer in that regard, and we are excited to be a part of the solution. We look forward to that collaborative approach to the affordable housing issue. Again, UDI is very supportive of the affordable housing initi initiative, but we cannot support the CHC business plan in its current state, nor the strategy as it calls for the creation of the CHC. So we would like to have a chance to revisit all of that at an appropriate and future date. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Uh, any questions for the delegation? I don't see anybody ringing in. Uh, that being the case, thanks very much for being here this afternoon. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wished to come forward during the delegation portion of our agenda? Gentlemen, the great thing about this is that just about everybody that's here knows exactly how the delegation thing works. <laughs> so everybody knows to introduce themselves and yeah, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Council. Scott Rossler with Edith Engineering. Uh, I'm here representing as a private consultant for UDI uh, Grand Prairie. And with me is Matt Buckta with uh, KCM Commercial. He's representing Canadian, Canadian Home Builders Association of Grand Prairie as well. Um, so just a couple things. Just I won't uh, beat the same drum that Mr. Pravitz did already, um, but uh, just to run through a few items and a few issues that we uh, found with this. Uh, I did a fairly thorough review. I've been involved in the process since the very, very beginning. Um, and I think I echo uh, Mr. Walker and Mr. Pravitz's comments that industry is very compassionate and caring about the city. And we do uh, we do a lot of business within this municipality. Uh, there's a lot of interest in solving the issues that arise. So the the um, you know the opportunity to have a say in this is is not taken lightly. It's something that we we definitely are compassionate about. Um, industry definitely wants to be a part of the solution. Uh, and as they had stated earlier, unfortunately, we're, we're, we don't feel we're there yet. So 
Um, and again, I'm going to apologize again that we do have to do this at council. <laughs> we did have a request to do this at committee. Uh, we're well aware of the public processes and that are in place and we would have definitely preferred to voice our concerns at that level rather than here. Um, uh, but as, as you're aware, we, were, we had some administrative issues that maybe stood in the way of that, so we'll, uh, we'll deal with it here. Um, we do also support the city's initiative to resolve affordable housing. Uh, unfortunately, the proposal that, we, that has been put forward, we don't feel is the is the best solution for the the problem. Uh, it should be noted that uh, that the affordable housing issue, the way that we understand it, is is not the same, and and we clarified this through our process, but it's not the same as um, social housing, emergency shelters, or homelessness. There's a a uh, separate process kind of being undertaken for, for that component of things. Um, and it's our understanding that the, the AHS, the housing solution, or affordable housing study and strategy presented does not deal with these concerns and separate in initiatives are required um, for that portion of the housing continuum. So um, there are some, there's a lot of documentation in front of you today. Uh, the housing strategy has a figure in it that kind of shows that figure one. It's on page uh, two of the strategy, I believe. Uh, talks about the uh, those those three uh, items that, that um, being emergency shelters um, and that type of, of assistance uh, earlier on, and that's part of. I think you have a plan for a five-year plan for homelessness. I believe that's what it's called. Um, anyway, so this is once you're in house, we help it to be affordable, is what, what my understanding is. So it is, so it is different. So I don't want to confuse the two and and uh, have that be the case. So um, the it should also be noted that the first goal of the strategy is to, um, of, of the strategy being that, being that there's three, there's three motions I believe coming forward today. First is a strategy, second is a business plan, and third is a housing corporation. Um, there was some discussion at one point about potentially being able to support uh, the strategy. I don't think we're in that place anymore. Um, the reason being is that. The first goal of the strategy, as you read through it, is to establish a nonprofit uh, housing corporation. So uh, we kind of lead the way into something that we feel is not the right direction. So uh, while we certainly support a strategy <laughs> to uh, for the city to to pursue, um, when the first goal of that strategy is to create a, um, a v what we feel is a very administrative and costly um, corporation, then uh, uh, we don't want to support that. So. Um, we do have a lot to offer as far as um, as far as finding a solution. Uh, we're very very interested in collaborating with the city and administration to find a most cost effective way um, to deal with this issue. This is something that is, like I said, is very very important to not only our industry but we feel like to our community, to our to the taxpayers, to uh, to the people that are in need in this situation. And we feel it's an onerous on us to ensure that we take the whether it's public funding, tax dollars, uh, industry support, anything that we can do to help, we want it to be the most cost-effective way that that's possible, meaning we want to reach as many people as we can with the, with any of the dollars that are placed towards this. So um, we would love to collaborate with the city and administration to find that solution. Uh, this may or maybe should have already included the formation of a board or some sort of a committee and stakeholders and interested parties. Um, so, so at the end of the day, this just feels a little bit rushed, and we're uh, we're interested in, in in helping in the solution. Um, current plan though proposes well in excess of half a million dollars per year of tax dollars uh, and administrative costs that currently don't get directed towards the solution and the people that need it. So um, that is that's our position. Uh, we do have other solutions. Again, we don't want to get into them at this point, but uh, they include uh, significantly less costs and. Uh, benefits such as uh, I'll give you a kind of a list of the things that we came up with, but uh, the solutions that, that we would we would have uh, that to present to the city would would be immediately deployable discounted rents that would be available to those in need, um, immediately available sites uh, for projects such as these, dispersion of units across the city, uh, avoiding the, the creation of uh, what we call like low income precincts, um, an increase in tax revenue for the city of Grand Prairie. A, a significant decrease in operational costs in comparison to what's in front of you today, and ultimate flexibility to adapt to a volatile Grand Prairie economy. Uh, meaning, when when once the need has been met, we'd be able to to adapt to that uh, and adjust accordingly. So, um, 
we do want to find the best solution to this problem before uh, we commit significant ongoing tax dollars towards the presented proposal. And the proposal from the city uh, currently commits long term at high cost to taxpayers and industry would like to have a say in, in a more collaborative and cost effective approach. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Rossler. Uh, Mr. Bakta? Yeah, I don't think I have much more to add than that. Uh, okay. You did a really good job of that. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. Any questions for the delegation? Council, any questions for the delegation? I don't see anybody in the queue. Then thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Anybody else that wish to come forward? This will be the last opportunity to speak to this agenda item before council deals with it later on in our committee business and reports. Uh, anybody else that wishes to speak to this item or any other uh, community issue? This delegation portion is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting and an opportunity for anybody that wishes to come forward. And we have one more delegation. Welcome. My name is Angie Peters. Uh, I've been involved in uh, affordable housing and dealing with homelessness for uh, quite some time at the at, at various levels. Um, I commend uh, the work that Reed has done to put together a next phase on affordable housing uh, strategy. Um, I do believe that we need to set up some sort of structure that is not city council uh perhaps uh well for sure this housing corporation or housing company right um if it's something that does not sit well with builders and business people in our city then it's not ready to launch yet um i believe that obviously there are some good conversations that can still happen maybe they need to happen in a different format to pull people together to find the solution. I think that somehow um, city administration in cooperation with uh, people in the community should be able to find some sort of a balance where it's not city council or city processes applying for grants and funding because I understand that to be too cumbersome. Otherwise we would have built some projects in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, more than, than what we have now. Um, however, the, what's being presented obviously is not going to have the support from the community. So I hope that with continued conversation happening very soon that we're able to find some sort of a solution. Okay. Thanks very much, Ms. Peters. Um, any questions? She's not even willing to take questions. No. <laughs> She's just out of there. No. Um, I don't see anybody with any questions anyways. So Angie, I think you're off the hook. Uh, was there anybody else that wished to make a presentation? I don't see anybody coming forward, and so I uh, appreciate everybody that did uh, make time out of their day to come this afternoon, uh, and then we'll close our delegation portion of our agenda. We have no items of unfinished business, and so we can go directly into reports. And item 7.1, Councillor, extended leave of absence. Council, you'll see a recommendation, uh, as we had uh, discussed previously, for an extended leave of absence for Councillor Blackburn from September 30th uh, to January 1st as he undergoes uh, his next phase of cancer treatment. I would look for a motion or a discussion on that. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I, uh, I move the Council approve an extended leave of absence for Councillor Blackburn from September 30th, 2019 to January 1st, 2020. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Um, this, of course, is a requirement uh, under the MGA should a council member miss more than four consecutive council meetings. Um, past experience showed us that Councillor Blackburn actually returned earlier than he had expected. Uh, that may or may not be the case here, but he would have the opportunity during this time to dial in for a council meeting, uh, a single item on a council agenda, as is allowed under our procedure bylaw uh, if he chose to. Any other discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, and that'll take us to 7.2, the procedure bylaw. Uh, I would look for a motion for first reading, and then we'd go to administration for an introduction. Can I get a motion for first reading? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'd move that Council get first reading to bylaw C-1299, being the procedure bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. So I'll look for the vote on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. 
That motion carries, and I will look to the city clerk for uh, a bit of an introduction to the procedure bylaw. Good evening, Council. The city's current procedure bylaw was passed in 1995 and over the past 24 years has undergone several amendments but has not received a complete review by Council. The proposed bylaw presented today reflects current practices used to set rules, establish the rules and functions of Council and standing committees, and align powers and duties with current legislation, including the Municipal Government Act, the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, and the City Administration Bylaw. Specifically, the proposed bylaw includes updated provisions as follows. Under section 2.6, uh, this section provides clarity on non-suspendable rules by providing references to legislation where applicable. Under sections 4.18 to 4.27, these provide for the use and authority of a council committee of the whole as our council currently uses this process. Under sections 6.1 to 6.5, these outline the process for submitting and approving agenda items by our corporate leadership team and the city clerk and the respective deadline requirements for adding items. Under sections 7.25 to 7.30, processes required for public members who wish to address council or standing committee are addressed under these sections. Under section 9.7, this provides for the use of a friendly amendment to make minor, minor changes to a motion put to an assembly with the general consent of the assembly. The proposed bylaw no longer contains the provision requiring unanimous consent to pass or written notice of motion to bring this bylaw before council. It's the current practice uh, for administration to br bring reports to the appropriate standing committee on any proposed bylaw or bylaw amendment that does not require a public hearing and for committee to discuss and debate the merits for recommending action to be taken by council. In Schedule A, Orders of the Day, the changes reflect the current procedure used to conduct council meetings with a start time of three o'clock and um, uh, open delegation portion of the meeting to occur at the three o'clock afternoon session and a scheduled delegation portion of the meeting to occur after six o'clock. Under Schedule B, Standing Committee Structure, this now includes four standing committees to align with our current service areas, and they are established in alphabetical order, outlining the duties and responsibilities for each. And then finally, under Schedule D, this is a new schedule, um, which uh, provides uh, secondary motions information as a reference guide for the most commonly used motions by council. So this bylaw encompasses the current practices used by the city and our elected officials and aligns with the legislative requirements of the MGA. Administration recommends council give three readings to bylaw C-1299 being the city of Grand Prairie's administration bylaw. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so that we have a motion for first reading. Is there any questions for administration at this time? Councillor Bressy. Great, thank you, Mayor Given. I appreciate it. I'm just kind of curious. I'm very aware that our organizational meeting is for our next council meeting, and I'm also hesitant about passing this bylaw today. I'm wondering if there's any particular urgency to get this passed before our organizational meeting, or if council decided to take its time to do this and not pass this today, if there's any risks we might be exposing ourselves to by slowing down this process. Ms. Olszewski? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, the current procedure bylaw we currently have in place establishes three standing committees. And at our organizational meeting of council, we will be required to appoint members to those committees. 
If in fact we want to align with our four standing committees, we would need a new procedure bylaw or an amendment to it to allow the appointment of members to that to the standing committees that currently exist. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for administration? Councillor Plot. Uh, thanks, Mayor Brown. I think um, when we first started on this path, part of it was to, I think, hopefully streamline some of the meetings. I'm just wondering if administrations had a time, a chance um, to see if there was a lot of hours saved with administration time, putting the, the meetings together like it is, or if, it, you know, over that course of a time, or if there was enough enough time to realize there was a savings in administration's time, and that's why we're recommending that or, or not. That's where we're at on that. Sure. So is there anybody from administration that would care to take that? I'm not sure if that would be the city manager or the city clerk. See, uh, see City Manager Galante. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the City Clerk's Office, I believe, is tracking uh, the attendance, motions, and uh, times uh, com compared with the previous system. So we will be able to, uh, we have been compiling this for the last few months, I believe since March or so. So we can, we can produce a, a report about the, the differential between the previous system and this system that has been a pilot uh, until October, so decision time now is to to continue with this system or or to revert to the to the old one. But we can uh, we can prepare a, a quick report and circulate that to council. Okay. Council Platt. Thanks. Just uh, one other one and, and more. Just um, a, a conversation that was had here last week in council chambers, and unfortunately um, with Mr. Blackburn not being here. One of his concerns, I guess, was about the the format with us putting this that. In essence, what's end up happening now, it seems like as they become a committee of the whole when we put all the, the corporate services and living everything together. And I'm just wondering if there's going to be any differential on that. Um, I guess his concern was if, if we're going to have uh, appointees to these committee and all of councils there, then why we're not just making them a committee of the whole meeting. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if somebody could administration can speak to that. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The intent is to have four separated committee uh, chairs appointed by the mayor. Uh, however, the sequence will be in, in order. It's presented in alphabetical order right now on, on, on paper, but then will be at the discretion of council to rearrange. Uh, currently, we follow, I believe, the sequence is infrastructure and economic development go first, uh, then is uh, protective services, then is corporate services, and finally is um, community services. Um, but in, in, in that order, can, can be, uh, uh, that, that would be the sequence that can be uh, applied, uh, although on, on paper now, on the bylaw is on alphabetical order. So it will be four chairs uh, designated. So it's not a committee of the whole system, because only the members appointed to each committee will be able to vote on on each side however has proven the you know value to have all council uh, attending so they can hear the conversation and be informed at this at the same time that that results in significant savings in time for not only for council members but also for the administration okay. thanks mr galante uh, any other questions or discussion uh, before we move on to uh, call for second reading any amendments? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'd look for a second reading. <laughs> Council Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor. Given a move that Council give second reading, the bylaw C-1299. Thanks very much, Council Thiessen. Uh, open for discussion and debate, Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm actually gonna try kind of an unusual motion, so if, if I get ruled out of order, I'll understand, but I suspect that there's actually quite a bit of discussion that has to happen on this item, and I also suspect that most of our gallery doesn't find procedure bylaws as fun and as exciting as I do. So I'm gonna move that we postpone discussion of this item until committee business is concluded. Okay, okay so motion to postpone. Um, is there any discussion debate on that point? Uh, so postpone to later on in this afternoon's agenda. Yep. Okay, uh, I don't see anybody ringing in, so I'll call for the vote on the motion to postpone. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, so we'll postpone consideration of that item until later on in our agenda, and Councillor Bressy can make all the amendment motions he wants to at that time. 
so we will uh, move on to our committee business, uh, starting with item 8.1 and Councillor Clayton. Mayor Gibbon, I would move that uh, Council adopt the minutes of the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, October 1st, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Uh, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, as you'll see in the package, there is two recommendations there. However, I have a motion prior to the recommendations that I'd like to present. Um, I would move that the that council approve move the affordable housing strategy uh, to a council committee of the whole meeting, it be it revisited and explored at that committee uh, meeting and that the meeting should include industry and stakehold, industry and community stakeholders. As we've heard today, the industry feels, uh, the housing and, and development industry feel that the process, um, although consultative in, in, in process, wasn't uh, consultative in what uh, came out of, in regards to the document. Um, I think that all of council agrees that an affordable housing strategy is a priority. However, I don't think that all of council agrees to what that definition is or what that looks like. Affordable housing means different things to different people. And as a council, I don't know if we've had this discussion as a whole and or with industry. So I would hope that as a result of this process that we would come to a more full understanding and then determine the needs and expected goals as an outcome. So the motion being that this document to be moved to a CCW um, at a further date. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Councillor Clayton. Um, so the motion is to uh, refer that to uh, CCW with an opportunity for community stakeholders to present. Obviously, they wouldn't be a part of Council Committee of the Whole. They would have an opportunity to present at it. Um, and is that intended to apply to both of the recommendations that are in the package? Second. Okay. Okay. Sure. So, motion uh, to uh, refer the uh, endorsement of the affordable housing strategy to a council committee of the whole. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, the motion being that Council endorse the proposed draft Grand Prairie Community Housing Company business plan. Um, as I can't speak against this motion, um, the motion is there as presented. I will encourage other councillors to put in their comments and we will go from there. Sure. So you would like to request another council make council member make the motion? Yes, please. Okay. Sure. Is there somebody else that would care to make the motion coming from committee? Councillor, Councillor Thiessen. Guys, right? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I guess I'm going to try my own motion here since we're uh, using our procedure bylaw like uh, on mass for postponing and referring to other dates. Uh, I I would move that Council uh, move the discussion to endorse the proposed draft of the Grand Prairie Community Housing Company business plan to the same Council Committee of the Whole. Uh, in speaking to this motion, I am in support of the uh, draft of the Grand Prairie Community Housing Corporation, um, but I do think that there is a lot more consultation that needs to occur with industry uh, as well as with our administration, and I think if we're going to endorse a plan and build a new company, all of councils should, uh, or most of councils should feel okay with the plan that's being presented, uh, and I think there they're, they're inclusive of each other. Uh, the st draft strategy or the affordable housing strategy uh, says that we should, as one of our tools in the toolbox, uh, create a municipal housing corporation to make more accessible, affordable uh, housing for our people. And uh, if we're going to have this discussion later with industry, I think we should uh, keep it all as a whole. So that's my motion. Okay. Thank you. So it's motion to refer then to that same council committee of the whole? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. So a motion to refer, uh, as with Councillor Clayton's motion, open for discussion and debate. In discussion or debate on Councillor Thiessen's motion to refer this item. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Given. I would encourage that Council defeat this motion. Uh, my concern being um, that until we have the housing strategy and uh, in place, there's 
potentially not even a need for a business plan. If council doesn't have the intent to have a business plan, currently we passed the motion at committee level that we put money, uh, send money to budget deliberations for um, administration to sort of include that in budget deliberations. If a business plan isn't approved, there's no need for money to be put to budget deliberations. And so at this time, I, um, I feel there's no need for a business plan. Um, let's get the housing strategy completed, and at that time we can determine what the needs are in regards to a business plan. So at this point, I would encourage Council not to support the, um, the moving of a discussion of the business plan. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Uh, Councillor Plot. Uh, thanks, Mayor Goodman. Um, I'll, I'll echo uh, Councillor Clayton's comments as well. I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I have an appetite to see us do something with a strategy. Um, the more I've looked at this and, and I've been, been thought about it, the, the less appetite I have to have a housing corp to, to look after that strategy. I think that there's other opportunities we could be looking at. And, and in, in respect of administration's time about preparing things and our council's time to be able to have that conversation, I'd rather have the conversation be really spearheaded towards the strategy. I'm not saying that out of the strategy, some point down the road, we start talking about a housing corp again. But I, I think we need to deal with one before we deal with the other one. And I think that's part of the problem we've got in this is we're trying to do this all in concurrently. And I think we need to break these out in buckets. And so uh, I wouldn't be able to support Councillor Thies in motions as much as I appreciate what his intent is. Thanks, Councillor Plot. I see a couple others in the queue. I'll just say that I support the motion to refer. Uh, I think uh, the fact that this is an item in the affordable housing strategy um, identifies that those things are somewhat attached. I wouldn't say that we couldn't have an affordable housing strategy without a corporation, um, but I think consideration of the business plan, if there are specifics around the business plan that are challenges for people, then we should have an opportunity and venue to speak about that. Um, and if we're going to have all the experts in the room anyways for that council committee as a whole, I think that'd be an appropriate venue to speak about it. So I certainly will support the motion to refer. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'd really encourage Council to support this motion. And the reason is I've I've got big concerns about the business plan as presented. And I think that if, if the motion was to endorse the business plan, I definitely wouldn't be in favor of this. But to refer to the committee, I think that there's big changes and fundamental changes I'd like to see made to this business plan. At the same time, I really appreciate the work that went into it because it gives us a place to start and it gives us a chance to say, here are the things I like out of it. Here are the things. Here are the things where I'm not so sure on, and here's why. And I think that in the strategy, most of the strategy is actually pretty is very uncontroversial, and I think we're going to be aligned on most of the strategy. This, I think, is going to be the big hitching point. The one line that says forming a housing corporation, I think, is going to be the biggest discussion we have at that council committee of the whole. And I have troubles picturing how we even have that conversation. If we don't have something specific to start from. So as much as this business plan, I think, needs work, at least it's a starting point, and I think it's a very worthwhile starting point. So I'd encourage Council to vote yes for this motion to refer. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Councillor Thies, I see you in the queue, but I've got a couple of others here, and maybe I'll come back to you to close, okay? okay. Councillor O'Toole. Sorry. I won't be supporting this either. Uh, I'm looking at the future here in the province of Alberta. We've got a budget that's coming in from our governing uh and also the federal government has got some highlights that they wanted to uh, propose when they, whoever it is, they've all mentioned affordable and supportive housing. And I would like to see what, the, what comes out of the election and what happens to come out of the budget before I uh, endorse any draft for the city of Grand Prairie. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Tool. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. I will be supporting this motion. I think that once we get uh, to sit down and speak together about this strategy, it's possible that we all um, suddenly agree that having a housing company is, is the right way to go. And it would be a shame if we didn't then have that there to discuss. It may take just a few tweaks for us to all be satisfied with it. Or it may be something that subsequently we can um, we can either send back or or defeat. But to not have it uh, with us on the day when we're discussing the strategy, I, I think would be a bit of a mistake at this point. A lot of work has gone into it. It is an excellent document. Um, whether or not we come to agree with it remains to be seen. But uh, I think we need to have it with us that day. So I will support the motion to bring it forward to the same meeting. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I appreciate uh, 
the sentiment of the people around the table that support this motion. However, I remind you that a business plan, if you look in the definition, is a detailed plan for setting up or developing a business, especially in consideration of financial needs. In my opinion, we're not going to get in, we shouldn't be in this business, we don't want to get in this business, to put forward a business plan discussion at a council committee of the whole as intent that we're going to build a business that is a housing company. I think that council has to understand that there's no need for a housing company. We need a housing strategy, absolutely. Let's implement our needs, let's determine our needs, let's agree on a definition of what the housing needs are. But to set up a business to get into a housing company is not my intent, and I encourage you to defeat this motion. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Um, I see then nobody else in the queue. Councillor Platt. Uh, thanks, Mr. Gibbon. And just to kind of echo that again, I was, you know, uh, Councillor Bressy almost had me swayed there for a minute, but I, but I think the thing for me is I want that conversation to be about the strategy. I don't want us to have a conversation of committee whole where we start talking about a business plan. I have no problems if out of that strategy we say down the road we should develop a business plan, but right now I don't want that. Next, I would like to see us get a strategy, and I'm really worried if we sit there and we start deliberating about a strategy and a housing corp and how it's going to work, we're going to extend the strategies uh, of happening because we're going to get hung up on the business plan. And I don't want us to get hung up on the business plan. I want us to get dealing with a strategy. And the business plan will come if we really feel we need the plan, the, the, the business corp, after we're talking about strategy, then we can do it. But I think of us spending all that time on it with our administration and industry, is here to, that, you know, when they were talking about it, I don't, they didn't talk about it. I won't put words in the mouth, but let's deal with the strategy. These are two different things. And if we try to put them together, as much as it might be nice to think we're all in the same room, we're going to lose sight on what the strategy is and get mixed up in the weeds about the business component of it. So let's just concentrate on the strategy at this point. So again, appreciate the intent. I just can't support it. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Uh, I'll just enter one more time to say I uh, would encourage Council to uh, support this going to that Committee of the Whole so it can be reviewed in context. Uh, we did hear specific comments from our presentations today about some of the details in the business plan and the administrative burden that's there. Uh, and if industry or anybody else has alternatives, uh, then we need to have an opportunity to just consider those. And again, consider those in context of the larger overall plan. Uh, if people are fundamentally opposed to the concept of the uh, housing corporation, uh, in spite of the fact that it has been in front of council a number of times, the overall concept, um, but if people are opposed to that, then certainly they would have an ability to reject it at that council committee of the whole or reject it at any other subsequent time. Uh, but for those council members that wish to review it in context to see if there is something useful there, uh, then it would be worthwhile to have it go to that council committee of the whole so it can be reviewed. And if it is rejected at that time, well, then that's fine. Um, I don't see anybody else in the queue, so I'll go to Councillor Thiessen to close. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon, and uh, it's been great to hear the different perspectives on this uh, topic. Uh, just to close, I'd uh, just like uh, hopefully to maybe shift some of the thinking uh, and maybe echo the Mayor's uh, sentiments. Uh, this isn't an all-inclusive thing, uh, but it's all included in the current uh, affordable housing strategy plan. Uh, I don't see how we can debate about the affordable housing strategy plan when it has as one of its options to include a municipal housing corporation, which was also an option in our previous affordable housing strategy that we never actually implemented. Uh, we can remove it at that time and we can continue the discussion at a different time as well. Uh, it's reasonable to have the conversation and I think it's it's respectful and responsible to bring industry to the table and have that conversation with them at the same time. Um, the truth of the matter is, is uh, we need to do something in our community and uh, quite literally across the country about the issues that are facing housing, homelessness and affordability, especially in our community, because those issues are facing us now. If we're going to part and parcel this and remove things and then we don't have to have that discussion at the Council Committee of the Whole, I mean, I guess that's our will to do today. But I would really like to have that whole conversation. And if it needs to be paired out after the Council Committee of the Whole, then we pair it out um, and we remove it. And we do that responsibly and respectfully. Uh, silencing the conversation is not the right way to go, especially in our line of work. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it would be unjust to our administration who's put in hard work and time into this. 
and also all of industry that sits back here that may be opposing the, the creation of a municipal housing corporation and its business plan in its whole as part of our affordable housing strategy. But I don't want to waste their time either just by killing it. I want to hear what they have to say. I want to have that discussion with them. I want to hear the pros and the cons of it all. And I don't think we shut it down today. So I, I'm just going to ask nicely, please support this motion. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. I don't see anybody else in the queue, and that was our close, so I'll call for the vote on the motion to refer uh, this item to the Council Committee of the Whole. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, that motion does not carry on a tied vote, uh, so the uh, referral motion has failed, and so we can either have a uh, motion on the recommendation as it came forward from council um, or any other motions uh, or even to receive for information. Councillor Clayton. So I would move that council uh, receive the Grand Prairie com the draft Grand Prairie Community Housing Company business plan for information. Okay, thanks very much Councillor Clayton. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Pallott. Thanks very given. Um, I do want to say that I, I really want to thank Reed and his team for this. I know there's been a lot of work. There's some great data. There's some great goals. This definitely isn't a throwaway document, even in the present state. Obviously, it's got industry here. It's got us all talking about it, and I think that's great. And I, and I do think there's been a lot of great work. There's there's a lot of stuff that I have no doubt will come out of this strategy that will be implemented and, and will happen. So I really want to thank you for what the work you've done on this. Much appreciated. Thanks, Councillor Plott. Any other discussion or debate on the motion to receive for information? Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, I'd like to echo what uh, Mr. Pallott had said. Uh, I do think that there's a lot of great information, and uh, I think we all, as council, I'm going to not put any words in anyone's mouth, but I think we need, and we've talked about this, to solve a problem in Grand Prairie. Uh, what that process is and what the timelines are, uh, I'd like to get it done sooner than later as well, but I want to know all the information, and I'm looking forward to bringing this uh, proposed document back and discussing it even further. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Toole. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue. So we'll go to Councillor Clayton to close. Mayor Given, uh, just echoing uh, the sentiment for administration. Um, I agree there's a lot of great information in this document. Uh, it was a very uh, informative piece uh, and it was useful. And I think it'll still be useful going forward in the strategy. The strategy that we'll do as a Council Committee the whole uh, will take us to the next steps of determining the housing needs and in turn um, maybe it's not right now for a business plan maybe it's in the future um, I appreciate though the work that was put into it so thank you for that thanks Councillor Clayton uh, call for the vote please vote thank you that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Clayton, anything else to highlight from that set of Yeah, I wanted, I just uh, don't know if it's a, just a housekeeping item or if uh, we need to make a motion on this, but I just wanted to, so that um, in regards to budget deliberations, that the uh, motion that was passed at committee to send potential funding for the business plan to budget deliberations, do you want a motion to remove the, that funding or are we good as, as is? I think uh, the motion has been made at the committee. Uh, administration, I think council actually does already have additional funding in the budget from last budget. Um, I see Mr. Manuel though. Mr. Manuel, you have to get your microphone. I believe it was actually our intent to uh, have council refer it as opposed to um, to committee, but um, I, I think we're uh, content either way. Okay. Okay, so uh, seeing nothing else from that committee then. Can I just provide it? There was a few sure, other. Sure, Councillor Clayton, if you had more to say. Thank you. Uh, just a couple other items that were discussed at IPS that day. Um, planning and Development told a public, held a public engagement for the College Park ARP on September 17th at Muskocipi Pavilion. Um, as somebody who lives in College Park, I attended it, and, and I was happy to see that Numerous residents were there providing information. As well, I wanted to thank administration providing an online option for this survey. So I think that um, that was a useful um, engagement of the community and, and the residents and business owners in College Park. Uh, there is 
For those of you who aren't aware, Transportation Department has now taken possession of the former bypass. Um, and you probably have noticed that uh, city staff has been uh, hard at work doing patching and line painting and concrete repairs and, and the bypass has never looked greater. So thank you for that for administration. Um, as well, there is still some overlay and, and uh, paving that's being worked on. I think we're coming close to an end. Hopefully the snow is only a one day thing and we can complete our projects as, as they're started. And for now, I think that's it for my report. Thanks. Thanks. Councillor Clayton. We'll move on to Corporate Services Committee. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council adopt the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. Oh, I've got a bunch of stuff here to talk about. You're going to want to fill my water glass in a minute or two. Under uh, bylaw C-1392, Grand Prairie Airport Business Operating and Parking Bylaw, the recommendation is Council give first reading of bylaw C-1392, being the Grand Prairie Airport Business Operating and Parking Bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. No discussion or debate on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. I move that we give second reading to bylaw C-1392. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on second reading of the airport business operating and parking bylaw? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. And I'd move to have third reading of bylaw C-1392 at this meeting. Thanks, Councillor Tullis. So this is a motion to have third and final reading at this meeting. Uh, in order for us to move on to that third reading, it must this motion must carry unanimously. Any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion does carry unanimously. So, Councillor Tullis, we can carry on. Mm -hmm. I uh, move that we give third reading to bylaw C-1392 being the Grand Prairie Airport Business Operating and Parking Bylaw. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. I think there's just one that hasn't stuck. Council, make sure your vote's stuck. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole, keep Perfect. going. We're down to uh, item 8.2.2, bylaw C-1374, the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board Bylaw. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. That's motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Councillor O'Toole, carry on. I'd like to move that we give second reading to bylaw 1374. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. This is a motion for second reading, an opportunity for any discussion, debate, amendments, uh, or motions. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm going to try an amendment that was made and failed at committee, but maybe Council will be open to it. And that is, I would move that under Section 8.1, that we add in that an appellant shall have their fee refunded if the board finds in their favor. And the idea of this is that if you file a subdivision development appeal board appeal, there's a lot of time and a lot of energy that goes into putting that appeal forward. There's also a fee you have to pay. And that fee is to cover the mandatory advertising costs the city has. We need to advertise the paper. We need to do a few other things, let the community know what's going on. And so in the past, we've decided that the person who's filing the appeal should carry that fee. Um, I personally feel that if somebody wins an appeal, that the Subdivision Development Appeal Board has found that in some way the city's processes were in error. Either they've had a land use bylaw that maybe wasn't cl as clean as it should be or it was interpreted in some way. And I feel if the board's saying that in some way our process was in error, that the city should eat, the, sh should eat all the costs. We shouldn't ask the applicant to eat those costs. Just to, one thing to speak to this is I want to note that a lot of the times at the SDAB, we're not having big companies or very well-off individuals come speak to us. Quite often, it's a 
pretty average Joe from the city who's got limited means and is making an appeal in hopes of getting full enjoyment out of the single residential property that they own. And that's somebody where I think it's a big intimidating process for them. I think it's a very big burden to go through the time and energy. And I think it, they'd feel a lot better about it if they didn't have to pay $350 at the end of the day. So 350 bucks, I get that that's a lost cost we'll have due to advertising, but I feel in terms of the goodwill, it will, it will help us maintain with these residents who feel that we are in some way. I think it's worth it. So I hope council will support this amendment. Thanks, Councilor Pressy. Councilor Platt. Uh, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I appreciate that as the one that got beat up at committee trying to get that through. So I thanks for bringing it back to life here a little bit. But um, I, I, I really agree with that. I think if, if we've done something wrong in our process or something, I don't think it's necessarily the person's responsibility to pay for it. I can appreciate it's a cost to the city and there is a cost to us whether we win or lose. I don't think there's a whole bunch of these here. I just, it's the message we send, I guess. To me, this is a customer service thing. If somebody's taken the time and wrote a check to do it and they found out that they weren't wrong, I don't know why we made them pay for it. I think we want the community to be involved with decisions. I think we want that. And so I think charging them and even when they win is kind of discouraging them from being uh, from being transparent and open and wanting to come in and be involved with that kind of stuff. And so I, I would encourage us to, to support this. I'm hoping this isn't going to be a big financial burden of the city. I don't imagine it's going to be. But I do think that it's important that the community gets, uh, you know, that it isn't an out-of-pocket expense for somebody. As, as Councillor Bressie mentioned, these are usually, from what I understand, these aren't usually uh, big corporations that are coming in on this case. So, Okay, thanks, Councillor Platt. Uh, Councillor Bressie, did you make a specific amendment? You said you wanted to, but I don't think you actually did. Did, did you amend? Sorry, I think I moved that um, that Section 8.1 be updated to say that the appellant's fee will be uh, refunded if the Subdivision Development Appeal Board finds in their favor. Yeah, thanks very much. I was just looking for clarification. On if you gave us a section, and if you did, thank you. Um, thank you for doing it there. Any other discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, so we can move on to second reading as amended. Any other discussion or debate on second reading with that amendment? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole. I move that we have third reading uh, of bylaw C-1374 at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Tools. That's a motion to have. Must pass unanimously, otherwise it would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion does carry unanimously, Councillor O'Toole. I move that we give third reading to bylaw seat 1374, being a subdivision and development appeal board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, any discussion or debate on third and final reading uh, as amended? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole, keep going. Okay. 8.2.3 is the shallow gas tax relief initiative, and I move the council approve the person uh, to section 247 of the Municipal Government Act for all properties identified in the appendix, summary of property tax relief by company, council authorizes the cancellation and or refund of the 2019 property taxes paid or owing as to reduce the 35% property taxes requisitions detailed in sections 326 one and a and three five nine one and two as well as special taxes levied taxes levied under the section three eight two one where the tax rate is based on assessment and two cancellation and or refund of penalty tax penalties associated with the 2019 property taxes levied as per section 353 2 of the municipal government act okay. thanks
Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that motion? I would note and reflect uh, for Council that this was a specific request from the provincial government uh, who has sought to give shallow gas tax operators uh, property tax relief. Uh, their method of doing that in the 2019 year was basically to request that municipalities uh, uh, cancel or lower the property taxes as envisioned in this motion. Um, and the provincial government, I believe, has suggested that they would uh, essentially balance that off by not requisitioning as much education property tax from municipalities. Um, the total cost to the city of Grand Prairie, I think, is somewhere in the order of magnitude of about $1,400. Um, so obviously not a, a significant um, issue for us, where it may be for other municipalities, particularly in the southeast part of Alberta. Um, but just thought that was an important context if council didn't actually see the uh, letter of request from the provincial government in the details. Is there any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor O'Toole, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Well, I will highlight a few items. Uh, we, we had an in-camera uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, also, we had uh, the Director Services Area update. Uh, once again, uh, assessment and taxation is an ongoing process. It's not just at the fall, so there's uh, lots going on there. Corporate facility management, once again, the transit solar project has been completed. Preparations are underway for the demolition of the former school board building and salvageable assets not utilized by the city will be going on gov deals. We've been using them quite a bit over the last little while. And administration successfully hosted the second annual Alberta Municipal Facility Management Conference here in Grand Prairie. Uh, under finance, August and uh, variances are being presented to CLT this week. Administration is working with the 2023 budget and audit planning meetings with uh, our accountants are upcoming. Uh, IT administration attended an agenda management software demonstrations at the county as part of our discovery for future city project to replace the program that we have. And uh, yeah. Procurement administration is preparing for the transition of an e-procurement support is ongoing in department requests for year-end procurements. Planning for vendor information sessions is underway. We dealt with the bylaws, which we uh, dealt with here today. And I just want to thank uh, our city clerk and the administration in the corporate services department for doing a fine job. There's lots of stuff that they're doing and I commend their help going through the bylaws and finding where we need to make the changes and uh, keep them current. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. Move on to 8.3, Community Living Committee. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would move that Council adopt the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, as presented. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? And seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, just one piece of business coming out of a Community Living Committee meeting, and that's a land acknowledgement policy and a couple motions. So I'm going to break it up into two separate motions, uh, but all for the same ends. And so the first motion I would move that Council approve the proposed advancement of this project by authorizing administration to secure the service of a consultant experience in Indigenous land teachings to assist in further developing the framework in which to implement a land acknowledgement policy and associated administrative procedure. Uh, just uh, for any council members who weren't there that day, uh, I know uh, it sounds like we're spending some more money on a consultant, but uh, we were assured by our chief of staff, Shane Burke, that this would be a low cost uh, consultation uh, and uh, that all council would be involved in understanding the teachings that we can all learn so that uh, perhaps we don't step on the toes of of ourselves or or our indigenous uh, First Nations people who originally inhabited this land and give them the proper respect they deserve. Thanks very much, Councilor Eason. And I'm just looking at Mr. Bork. I believe uh, we had a discussion at committee about identifying an appropriate funding source. I know that there was some discussion with the mayor's office about uh, availability within council's budget. Mr. Bork, do you have information on that? Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. 
Uh, yes, we have had a discussion with the mayor's office, and we have identified a source of uh, previously um, uh, budgeted money that won't be spent for that uh, that need. So this isn't new money. This will be uh, a line item in council's current budget we'll be using. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks for that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any other discussion or debate on the motion? Not seeing anyone in the queue, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. All right, so this is more of a, along the lines, but I guess I would move council acknowledge the first step in the process is to have council along with senior administration participate in an education session proposed as a medicine walk and facilitated by the consultant in order to obtain meaningful insight into the value and meaning behind the practice of traditional land acknowledgement statements. Now, I pretty much just sum that up in my in my close for the first motion, but I think it's also important that we as a council acknowledge that uh, uh, some of us may not be comfortable with doing traditional things, so it's just uh, looking for the support of council to approve this, and uh, hopefully we'll get a unanimous vote. Okay, thanks, Council Thiessen. Any other discussion or debate? I'll just say that I would encourage council support for this motion. I think uh, the intent here is uh, not just to take symbolic actions by establishing a policy, but actually to make those actions meaningful by demonstrating that we first have a will to learn um, and then basing our actions on our, our increased knowledge. Uh, so really that the intent behind this is to ensure that any action that we take in this area is um, with intent um, and based on uh, increasing our own personal understanding. So I would encourage council to support the motion. Uh, again, I don't see anybody in the queue, so I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, that motion carries. Uh, Council Thiessen, anything else that you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Sure. I got a couple things. Uh, we did uh, have a delegation from the Grand Prairie Public Library and the Peace Library System, uh, which came in and did a fabulous job of uh, describing how their symbiotic relationship works. Uh, so thank you to Deb Craterman and uh, Linda Duplessis for coming on in and also giving us that extra invite to go and celebrate the Grand Prairie Public Library's 80th anniversary that just happened this past week. I hope you all had a chance to go in there. Also from our director service area update, uh, we had uh, the seven generations free public skate on Saturdays uh, from 1.45 to 2.30 is underway at the Dave Barr Center and has so far been a huge success. Uh, so if you're itching to get on some skates, uh, that's the time to go and just drop on down. Uh, you're more than welcome to be there. And they'll take you. And speaking of skating, uh, could be your last opportunity to see some living uh, Olympic legends in our own fair city as Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore have announced their retirement from skating, but will still participate in Rock the Rink on October 13th at the Grand Prairie, or sorry, at the Revolution Place. Uh, finally, uh, Parks uh, fall projects are underway and are, are including repairs to ball diamond outfields, fertilization of sports fields, and other green spaces, tree planting and tree pruning. And the Leisure Center was reopened uh, in September after having the tur turf sanit sanitized and stretched over the summer. Uh, the pitch is being used for city recreational programming and is available for rent and recently was rented out by uh, the local Grand Prairie Bunnick Group in their first annual Bunnick tournament that was held on the weekend of September 28th. That is all I have for now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, Councillor O'Toole. Do you know who won the Bunnick event? Can you tell? Councillor Thiessen. Mr. Thiessen? Yeah, it was a group of uh, five, so I guess uh, that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, you're spoiling my surprise. No, no, uh, I want to know. All right, all right, there's a group of five. I'll tell you the Bunnick tournament. That wasn't part of the uh, the report, but uh, there was uh, 12 teams that took place, 50 people, uh, and people came from as far away as Dawson Creek uh, in their teams, uh, Mundare, and Sherwood Park. Uh, the team that won consisted of 44-year-old uh, Brad Jarvis, 74-year-old Marion DeJong, 13-year-old Jasper Maxima Thiessen, 7-year-old Lennox Maxima Thiessen, and their running alternate, 41-year-old Chris Thiessen. Congratulations. I knew it was coming. I knew. I am the champion. And they said that it would block out my face, and I can see very clearly that my good-lookingness is still beside this old horse bone there. So thanks for bringing that up, Councillor O'Toole. There you go. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, so I think that handles all of our committee business and some items of other things. 
Um, we have no items of correspondence in with the council agenda. I guess I just would take the time to note that uh, all council members did receive uh, at the start of this meeting letters from Habitat for Humanity, New Rock Developments, and Alberta Health Services uh, Public Health, all with respect to the City of Grand Prairie Affordable Housing Strategy, all in support of that strategy. Uh, so we would just acknowledge that uh, we didn't do that during the delegation because they weren't sort of here as a delegation, but would acknowledge that we did receive those. All council members received those endorsements of the strategy. Um, and with respect to delegation business, I think uh, all of the delegations were related to item 8.11. So I'm not sure that there's anything to receive for information as rising from that since we did already direct that item to a council committee of the whole. Um, we have no notices of motion this evening. Uh, council member reports. Sorry, council may I give him a point of order? Yeah, yeah sure. Council Bressy, did you have something further? I believe we postponed um, item 7. Ah, thank you. 7 thank you. Thanks for that catch. Yes. Um, we are ready for your amendments to the procedure bylaw. So, sure. So I think we're on to uh, second reading, I believe. Uh, so, Councillor Bressy, uh, any business arising on second reading? Well, gee, I wonder how you do. I'd have lots of amendments. So, <laughs> let me know when you want me to when you want me to potentially stop because somebody else wants to get in. But first of all, just a question for administration. I'm looking at item 6.2 where CLT has to approve an agenda at least a week before meetings. And I'm just before regular council meetings. And I'm wondering how that impacts. <laughs> Usually coming out of committee, we add things to the council agenda and committee is less than a week before council. So how would that impact our current practice? Item 6.2. Sure. For the city clerk. Thank you, Mayor Given. The item actually aligns with current practices and does um, allow for items from committee to be uh, forwarded on to a council meeting accordingly. Uh, specifically, this item addresses uh, reports from administration that are um, presented to a council or committee meeting um, outside of a recommended course from council. Great. Thank you. Uh, well, if I may try an amendment, Mayor Given. Sure, Council. So, and it's actually not going to be to that. I'm satisfied with that now. But zooming over to Section 7.25, where we talk about the ability of members of the public to present to Council. Within this bylaw, there's a requirement for members of the public to submit a completed delegation request form to legislative services no later than one week prior to the day of a committee meeting. I'd move that Council amend that to one day prior to a committee meeting. And just to speak to this, I think that it, it should be easy to get before council and other committees. I think asking somebody to speak for a week out is a little bit burdensome, but it's especially concerning to me because a week out from a committee meeting, the public won't even know what's on that agenda. So essentially we're saying saying if this stands as, as written that you can come and raise new business at a committee meeting, but you can't actually come to a committee and talk about what that committee is gonna be talking about, at least under our current practices. So I hope Council will support this amendment. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on that amendment? Councillor Palat. Uh, thanks, McVin. I'm just kind of curious on how that would impact administration if you were able to vote, if, that's, if it's doable, and, and uh, how that would look. Sure, I'll look to the City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, the intent of the motion is to support having uh, delegations attend a Council meeting, and that's um, something that Council would absolutely support. With regard to logistics of creating an agenda, it would just mean that that delegation would not appear on the agenda. Okay. Any other discussion or debate? Uh, I'll say that I support the amendment. Uh, I think in the past we've had a relatively informal process for people willing to, wishing to speak to committee. Uh, I think that this uh, one day in advance is, is probably the right amount of formalization. Um, and if we find that that works well, then maybe we could do uh, more it needs to be tightened up. We can do that, um, but I think before going to a requirement for somebody to have uh, a thought that they want to present uh, without seeing the agenda, um, that this one day is is the the right amount of formalization. So certainly support the amendment. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, and then moving down to item 7.27, it's a similar clause, but talking about regular council meetings. And again, there's a one week prior requirement. And for this one, I would move that we change it to three hours prior. And the idea being, I think that if you tell us in the morning that you want to come to council, I think that that's appropriate. And maybe we'll have debate. Maybe somebody wants to move an amendment and maybe three hours is too aggressive for council stuff. I don't know. I'm comfortable with three hours. Maybe we want to make it day maybe we want to make three days but i'm moving three hours and i just think a week is way too long i think it's way too long to say it's scheduled one week again usually our committee business concludes six days before a council meeting so this would give somebody no ability to come talk to us in the evening uh, between when committee meets and one council uh, and one council meets thanks councillor russi uh, open for discussion and debate on that amendment councillor Pilat. thanks mayor given i don't know if we've adopted the friendly amendment thing yet here so I'll just make a comment that I I like to see it align with the one day I just think of administration is going to do work I think there's consistency in that message that we're kind of open for business one day in advance but I, I do think there's some three hours if we start at nine o'clock they'd have had to let us know the day before anyway so or else they'd be a walk-on so I kind of would like to see it be a one day so I couldn't support it as that but if it was a one day um, I, I could support that okay. thanks Councillor Platt Councillor Bressy yeah, I just know that this talk about regular council meetings, which right now are scheduled for three o'clock, although who knows, maybe we'll maybe we'll change that. But one day before would put it on either a Sunday or a holiday. So you probably have to make it three days in advance or one business day in advance. But I was think that the spirit of my amendment is th is three hours. So I don't think I'm open to a friendly amendment on this. But if somebody else wants to move an amendment, I mean, that's your that's your right. But I'm not going to make a friendly amendment to this. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Councilor Bressy. Um, I'll say that I won't be supporting this amendment. Um, I think that we've created a, a, an additional opportunity for people to speak to council. They can speak uh, unannounced by, as the people did today, showing up uh, during working hours, which is unfortunate um, that it is during working hours, but there is that opportunity to speak either uh, informally, unannounced by showing up on the day, um, or uh, if you know in advance that you wish to speak, uh, which there's a lot of special purposes why people would do that. Uh, you have something that you're trying to promote, something that you're trying to inform council of. Those are the types of things that I think should probably be on the agenda. And in order for them to be on the agenda, you'd need to have that in, in advance so administration could do that. It could be printed out for councils to know that, council members to know that it's there and for the public to know that those delegations are happening. Um, so I'm, I am comfortable with the one week. Um, because uh, we also have that informal opportunity for people to come at the three o'clock time, as we saw today. Um, so I won't be supporting the amendment. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Given. I, um, uh, I don't support the amendment. However, I'd be prepared to make another amendment. My concern with the motion as it sits, or sorry, as uh, <laughs> the um, bylaw as it sits, when the package comes out Thursday at noon, and you may have not been privy or up to date on the information that was discussed at committee level, you may not be aware of something that's important to your nonprofit organization, your, um, you know, your neighborhood association, something that's uh, impacting your life. And if you find out Thursday afternoon when the package comes out, there's no opportunity for you to come if you work at a traditional nine to five job. So I think that's really unfortunate. I also agree that administration, I, I, support the intent that there needs to be some notice um, because, you know, with the format the way it is currently, um, we may not sit at the 6 o'clock evening time. So um, I I don't, do you want to amend an amendment? No. So I would encourage, um, I would prepare to see, and I'll make, depending on how this motion goes, I would prepare to see that uh, if you give notice by um, 4 o'clock on the Friday prior to council that you can show up as a delegation at the 6 p.m. session. If this motion fails, that would be my intent. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Uh, open for, oh, sorry, that was uh, any other discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's motion, uh, which would to am amend to uh, basically have people required to submit their sort of intent to attend um, the day of three hours before the council meeting. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, Mayor Gibb, I'm not in support of this. I think the fine line uh, is too quick, and I would encourage to not support this as well. And uh, when time comes, I would be supporting Councillor Clayton's motion if she makes it. Thank you. 
Thanks, Councillor Tool. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue on this amendment. Councillor Bresti, do you wish to close? Yeah, I hope that I understand what's being told instead of giving administration notice. At the same time, I really think that the there was no discussion about moving to this is the first time we've ever discussed the actual idea of moving to you have to fill out paperwork to come and present to council and uh, i really fundamentally don't like the idea and i get on a pragmatic sense we don't want to finish a meeting at 4 30 and be waiting here till 6 and nobody shows up and so i get the idea of you need to give us a little bit of notice so we don't end up doing that at the same time i think the less barriers people have to be able to come speak to us personally I think I think the better. I think it's a really great thing, a great practice of council that somebody doesn't have to take time off work and they can just show up and talk to us. I think that's a unique thing about Grand Prairie. I think that's a special thing about Grand Prairie. So I'd encourage council to vote in favor of this amendment. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Uh, that was the close. So I will call for the vote on Councillor Bressy's motion, which would uh, amend this section to identify that rather than one week uh, in advance of the desire to attend, uh, that that would be three hours um, prior to the start of the council meeting. Please vote. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Clayton wishes to call for a revote. Okay, so Councillor Clayton has requested a revote. <laughs> Councillor Clayton has requested a revote, so we will uh, call for the vote again. Please vote. Thank you. That motion does not carry on a tied vote. Councillor Clayton, you said you might have a. Sure. Uh, I um, echo some of the sentiment that uh, Councillor Bressy had in regards to the access to. Um, for the public to come to council meetings, and I appreciate, um, you know, your intent there. However, um, other municipalities have an understanding of when uh, you need to give notice if you're going to go to council. I think it's fair um, that people come to council as they want. However, notice uh, be given um, to support administration's workload uh, to prepare council for who may be potentially coming to council for discussion. Um, so I'd move that uh, the amendment be to... Um, the Friday noon prior to the council meeting. So that you may, must give written notice Friday noon prior to council. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks very much. Councillor Clayton, any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Pallott. Just kind of care. Uh, so if the Friday before was a holiday, would it revert to the Thursday? Or are we saying one business day before? Um, just for clarity, just because we could have Fridays that are holidays. Um, This is about people. Yeah. Councilor Clayton? I, I asked for some input from administration in regards to um, how that would look. Sure, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. So uh, we performed final review of agenda on Thursday morning at CLT, and pretty much the go ahead for publication for council occurs at noon on Thursday. Correct, uh, Arlene? So ideally, if we if we establish that as the cutoff, you will have, when you receive your packages on Thursday afternoon, you will have as part of the agenda package any delega scheduled delegation that will appear on the following Monday. So ideally it would be Thursday noon, the cutoff. Yeah, so that's not the intent of my motion. Um, so um, I guess the question being um, for legislative services, if if the email or the documentation is received by Friday noon, and I'll be at Friday a holiday, um, mon council may not get notice till Monday morning that you know there's a delegation coming. So I'm comfortable with that. If Friday was a, a, st a statutory holiday, um, Monday morning administration uh, should be able to forward out the information that there was a delegation that notif notified council or sorry the city that they want to come. You may not have the whole weekend to process that, but it rarely seems to happen that a statutory holiday is on a Friday. So I'd be comfortable with leaving my motion as is at Friday noon. Okay, it's your motion. You Thanks. can certainly do that. Councillor Plot, do you have a on this? Okay. Uh, so I see Councillor Clayton's motion to reflect uh, that the submissions that the submissions be uh, Friday at noon, preceding a council meeting. Councillor Friesen. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I won't support this motion. I'm I'm really with uh, Councillor Bressy on this. We need to be 
um, accessible and what's I, I don't understand that there's really any difference between finding out at um, you know on Monday morning or <clears throat> or Monday at 3 p.m. that there is a delegation coming in the in the uh, evening session I don't think it uh, it, we're prepared for any delegation to come forward anyway at 3 p.m. What would the difference be that we have an unannounced delegation at 6 p.m. in terms of us being prepared for it? As a council, we are prepared for unannounced delegations anyway. Uh, whether they come at 3 or at 6, uh, it makes no difference to me. Um, I do did like Councillor Bressy's idea of having them um, let us know by 3 p.m. that they are coming, um, but only so we know whether to... Uh, come back that evening or not. Um, so I, I'm I'm not in favor of, of uh, increasing the amount of time that's uh, needed from Councillor Bressy. So I won't support this motion. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'll uh, speak uh, in favor of Councillor Bressy's failed motion as well. Uh, I, I thought it was, uh, it, it's actually more accessible and really we're talking about time semantics here. Uh, so a Friday before uh, the Monday to me doesn't make a big deal. A lot of people uh, don't even open up their council packages uh, uh, from the general public until some point in, on the weekend if they're going to see what's going on. At that point, they're, they're already too late to come and speak against or speak towards anything that may be coming up on that council agenda. Uh, that's why I was supportive of Councillor Bressy's. I think it was made it more accessible to our community. As well as this this change of this this council format, uh, I think uh, we're, if we set up extra roadblocks to to our community, we should also be willing to, you know, unlock the door for them every once in a while. And uh, so, for those reasons, uh, I, I support the the, the need uh, to request a delegation to speak on any topic. But uh, I think our general public also needs to be aware of what is coming on our agenda, and that doesn't always happen the day of the agenda release or the day after. So to be able to format an email, fill out a form, and know all the procedures to get into City Council uh, is quite a bunch of uh, hoops that they got to jump through in a short amount of time, so I won't support this motion. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, Councillor Clayton, I'll come back here to you to close. Councillor Palat. Uh, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I'll be supporting it as I supported uh, Councillor Bressy's because I think it's still, to me, is is better than the objective that's in here that's saying one week prior. I think one day is better than one week. I think three hours was better than one day. But anyways, we're at one day, so I will be supporting the motion. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Um, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Councillor Clayton, do you care to close? Yes, thank you, Mary Gibbon. Um, I encourage Councillor to support this motion. My concern, not necessarily being what us as Council uh, is prepared for, um, from a delegation, it's more the concern of um, the preparation for administration. Um, for example, if a delegation came that um, a specific administrator needed to be in the room and they find out at 3 o'clock that day, I don't think it's realistic or fair to expect that administration get an hour's notice by the end of the workday to say, there's a delegation coming at 6 o'clock today, or they may not even know and the delegation shows up, and it's not fair to the delegation to not be provided with the information that they're looking for, which in turn creates a longer process because we need to make a motion to send it back to administration to follow up on. And so it's it's only fair, in my opinion, that we give the proper notice for the correct administration to be in the room in regards to the delegation that is coming. Friday noon is a reasonable amount of time for administration to find out who's going to be in the room, prepare for that discussion, and 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 get the delegation the information that they're looking for in a timely manner. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Clayton, for that close. We'll call for the vote on Councillor Clayton's motion, which would be to see the uh, request to speak uh, required to be submitted. I'm sorry, Councillor Clayton, what time did you say again? Friday Four? Noon. Fr Friday noon. Sorry, Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the Friday noon preceding a council meeting. I will call for the vote. Please vote on Councillor Clayton's amendment. Thank you. That motion does carry. Uh, were there any other amendments or business arising on the procedure bylaw? Councillor Bressy. Yeah, and I'm wondering if anybody else is going to get in on this, but I'm happy to keep on going. Um, so looking at 7.27, I'm going to move another amendment to that, and that is to add a provision that if any scheduled delegation speaks at the evening session, then other, then other members of the public wishing to address council on a similar topic may do so. 
And just the idea of this, usually when people schedule to come speak to us, there's often a group of them. And I think it's really goofy to say, hey, only the people that actually filled out a form can speak. I think a lot of people come expecting that they'll get to address us. And just there's been times where I have felt bad telling those people, you can't speak to us even though you came here for this topic. So I understand why you don't want to just have open comment on absolutely any topic at six. I disagree with that, but I understand that. But I really think that if we're already talking about a topic during open delegation or during scheduled delegation, that other members of the public should be allowed to weigh in. Okay. Thanks, Council Pressing. Any other discussion or debate on that motion? Not seeing anyone in the queue. Then I will call for the vote on Council Bressy's amendment. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Are there any other amendments or items on the procedure bylaw? Council Bressy. Yes, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, so now going to item 11.6. Give people a minute to scroll there if they care to. Item 11.6, this gives all members may attend any meeting of any standing committee or council committee and participate in a debate, but must not make motions or votes. I'd move that we add in all members have the right to have an agenda item added to all standing committee meetings. And this is a, this is a practice of council right now that you have the right as a member of council to ask any committee to talk about a topic. I think that's a very important right we have. And... In this council, we've been somewhat informal in terms of, I don't think on this council, if we didn't have that specific right in the bylaw, we'd still be fine. But part of our job with this bylaw that hasn't been touched in the last 25 years, it may not be touched in the next 25 years, is to make sure it works for any council, no matter how they, op how, how they operate. So I think that's an important right that you can bring up anything you want to standing committees. And I don't see that anywhere else in our new procedure bylaw. Uh, looking at our old procedure bylaw, there was something called an administrative inquiry that you could use to ram something to an agenda at any standing committee if you want. Uh, so you had that ability to ram something in the previous one, but you don't have that ability here, and I think that's important, right? Okay. Thanks, Councilor Bressy. Uh, so that uh, amendment is specific, uh, an amendment to item 11.6. Any discussion or debate on that amendment? Uh, not seeing anybody in the queue, I'll say I support the motion. I think it makes explicit the practice that we've had. Uh, we have, from time to time, had uh, the ability for council members to make motions to add things to committee agendas. Um, we have also done that informally. I think I've referred many members to council just to say, hey, if you have a simple email to the director and the chair, just to let them know that's coming, um, and to uh, legislative services or the city clerk. But I think that this uh, establishes that as a practice that if council wished to change, it'd have to be intentional about that. And I think council members should support this because it actually uh, ensures that that ability doesn't just rely on the goodwill of the mayor and that sort of informal direction. It actually is spelled out in the procedure bylaw. And so if any council wanted to remove that, they'd have to be uh, really intentional about taking it out. Uh, anybody else before I go to council Bressy to close on this item or is this for a subsequent item to close? Council Bressy? Actually, I'm hoping to make a friendly amendment, which technically isn't allowed right now, and I realize that I forgot an important part of that motion, and that is to say how a council member can add something to the agenda. And um, I'm hoping the motion can read, they have the right to add something to the agenda by notifying the city clerk at least one week prior. The idea is you don't necessarily have the right to just show up and say we're talking about this. Yeah, it'll show up on the agenda. Other councils can speak about it. I think that's an important part of the motion, so I'm hoping you'll allow that. Okay. Yeah, if that was part of your original intent, I think it would be important to... Uh, Certainly the current practice has been to ensure that it's with enough time for it to be on the written agenda so that other council members know that uh, that item is coming up for discussion. Um, and uh, a part of that process is for the city clerk to be aware so that they can include it in the agenda. Uh, so if council is okay with uh, Councilor Bressy uh, ensuring that he captured his motion fully, um, is there any discussion or debate? Uh, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. For one more council, make sure your vote's stuck. Thank you. That motion carries. Are there any other items of business on this? Council Bressy. Yes, thank you for your patience with me. Um, I'd, I'd ask council to look at item 8.2 or, so, yeah, section 8.2. No, wait a minute. You can't go backwards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long I get you guys' patience for, so I'm going to order of importance to me. Um, 
Go ahead, Councilor Rossi. So item 8.2 talks about pecuniary interest, and uh, section D says that if you declare a pecuniary interest, that you need to leave the room in which the meeting is being held until discussion and voting on the matter concluded. And I just point out that the MGA actually gives us the right to, co to go and sit in the public gallery and interact with council on the way that any other elector or owner or taxpayer would be able to would be able to access council and so I think that we're being more restrictive in this bylaw than the MGA actually is and I think they should be in alignment so um, I, I'd like to Mayor Given if you'd like me to suggest I'd like to add item 8.2 e to give councillors the right to enter the enter the gallery and interact with councils as the other taxpayer would be and I've got specific wording if you'd like me to give specific wording or else we could leave it to get worded properly after if you want me just to move an intent. Uh, well, I will actually just first look to uh, the city clerk just to confirm so that there's a section of the MGA that's listed here. Um, how does this conform to the Municipal Government Act? Thank you, Mayor Given. The item under 8.2 with regard to pecuniary or conflict of interest is uh, stated in our procedure by bylaw. Um, right from the Municipal Government Act. I am not uh, sure of Councillor Bressy's uh, reference to a council member being able to sit in a gallery. Nope. Councillor Bressy? So uh, that's in the Municipal Government Act uh, 172.3 says, if the matter with respect to which the councillor has a pecuniary interest is a question on which under this act or another enactment, the councillor as a taxpayer, an elector, or an owner has a right to be heard by council. It is not necessary for the councillor to leave the room, and the councillor may exercise a right to be heard in the same manner as a person who is not a councillor. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. So uh, would your intent be to add that then to the um, to 8.2 as E? Yeah, that's right, just to make our procedure bylaw read the same as the MGA. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. So, Council, you heard uh, Council Bressy recite the specific section of the Act, which uh, provides that provision for somebody to attend. Um, I would also note that this um, there's a, a crossover here um, with our uh, Council Code of Conduct, um, which talks about perceived uh, conflict of interest. Um, and so I guess I would... Uh, I would support Council Bressy's amendment so that we're conforming with what it says in the Municipal Government Act. I would advise <laughs> the council members think very carefully about using that opportunity um, because I think it could lead to the perception of conflict of interest. Um, but for the purposes of staying in alignment with the Act, um, I think that that's a, a reasonable amendment. Um, any other discussion or debate? Seeing... None, then I'll call for the vote on Council Bressy's amendment, which would add an 8.2e, um, as he described there, allowing for the opportunity for an, a member of council to return to the discussion as an elector or taxpayer, um, uh, as provided for under the Municipal Government Act. Uh, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Bressy. Great, thank you. I just got a couple more. Um, so looking at just above that in section, this is a question for administration, probably not a motion, but look at the section above. It says, a member does not have a pecuniary interest by reason only of any any interest is set, in the, set out in the act. And that's just reading funny to me. Is that is that correct? Or does it say a member, is it supposed to read a member does not have a pecuniary interest? Is it supposed to read a member only has a pecuniary interest? Sure. Thanks very much for the so question. 8 .1. Sure. Under 8.1, the first sentence of 8.1, uh, we'll look to the city clerk for a description maybe of the intent or... Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Again, this is a section that's taken straight out of the Municipal Government Act regarding pecuniary interest. And it is clearly stated, uh, as it is in the MGA, that a member does not have a pecuniary interest by reason only of any interest as set out in the Act. And then the Act goes on into several sections uh, that outline um, 
excuse me, <clears throat> uh, what does constitute a, pe a pecuniary interest? So this is the uh, same wording that's contained in the Municipal Government Act, is that correct? Correct. Okay. <coughs> Council Ressi? Right, it's formatted differently in the Act, and that's why my brain's hiccuping on there, so so thank you for answering that. Um, I think that the, the, la the, last thing, the last thing I've got, and I don't know if this needs a motion of Council or not, but it's talking about one of the things that this establishes is the way that our committee business works, and we've had the experiment of putting all of our committee business in one morning and I've got thoughts both for and against that but I think my biggest concern about the way we're doing committee business right now is we saw that community living last week we had a library delegation came at nine in the morning didn't end up speaking till almost noon and that's happened a number of times where the public wants to speak to us and can't for a long time and I think that's something that if we're going to keep this format needs to be fixed an idea I've had to fix that, and maybe there's other ideas out there, but an idea I've had to fix that is if we started standing committees with a committee of the whole meeting, and the only order of business on that was delegations, and delegations of addressing any matter of council could be added to that, and then that way they don't have to wait for the specific standing committee, or maybe there's other solutions out there. But I think if we're going to approve, and if we're going to go forward next week with our organizational meeting, saying all committees are up the same morning, that's something we really need to solve. It's just not respectful to members of the public to ask them to come and wait for hours, especially since we can't give them a good estimate of when committees are going to be done. So I don't know if I need a motion for that or if that's an idea, but I'm just looking for council's thoughts on that. Um, I would, uh, I see Councillor Clayton in the queue. I would say that if there's an issue that council's identifying um, that isn't necessarily resolved in the procedure bylaws it stands today, um, we don't have to leave this for 25 years. Like honestly, if, if we come up with something that's better on reflection rather than in the moment, we could simply have a motion to amend the procedure by at some other council meeting. Um, it's it's maybe a little bit more cumbersome and it's always nice to get everything done all at once, um, but there's no reason that we couldn't give that a little bit of thought, have a little bit of discussion with administration and come back with a, a well thought out sort of approach or solution to that. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, my advice would be uh, if there's some hesitancy about that or uh, uh, if we want that's a challenge that we want to solve and I agree that it is uh, hasn't worked particularly well so far um, then maybe what we should be doing is giving it a little bit of thought and coming back with a little well thought out solution uh, rather than trying to do an off the fly off the cuff amendment to the procedure bylaw. Um, Procedure bylaws has got lots of stuff in it. Let's stop all that stuff and let's continue to revise on an ongoing basis rather than putting it on a set it and forget it and trying to get it all right in the first instance. So that, that would be my advice. Uh, I see Councillor Clayton in the queue. Thanks, Mayor Given. Yeah, similar comments. I think there's a couple other things in the process of our meetings and particularly committee meetings. Um, currently, there's time indications on the schedule. They're obviously very loose, noted times. On the other hand, they're not necessarily fair to delegations if they're choosing to come or committees especially at community living that um, are part of the agenda and present and so but I, I agree that's not really something I think we're going to solve in a bylaw process so um, I, I appreciate your comments here but I think it's something internally through communication potentially we could we could solve okay thanks Councillor Clayton um, I will say one item uh, that I was wondering about as uh, administration sent this out last week um, and if there's a council member that wished to make a motion to this effect, it's about the order of the committees. Uh, right now, I think my understanding from administration is that they would default to uh, presenting the committees in the order that they're listed in the procedure bylaw, which is currently alphabetical. I think uh, recognizing that the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee uh, will deal with development permit issues, um, which is where we often have uh, delegations uh, that attend to deal with their permit issue. It would make sense to me that that always be the first committee um, that doesn't deal with the issue of uh, when the subsequent committees fall, but it means that the one committee that we know has a function that will often have members of the public attend for specific business should always be first. That, that would make sense to me rather than just an alphabetical, uh, which I think it currently starts with corporate services. Uh, uh, yeah, Corporate Services Committee. So I think if we put Infrastructure and Economic Development. Community, community Services, sorry, Community Services. Yeah, so if 
you know, the, the motion that I'd be looking for is uh, to amend that order to reflect infrastructure and economic development as the first committee of the day. Uh, Councillor Clayton? I'd be prepared to make the motion. Um, as stated, so that the order of a committee is being uh, infrastructure and um, economic development, uh, followed by um, community services, because that would be the other committee that potentially has delegations that present. Um, so if we went to that order, subsequently, um, the other two as noted. Thanks. Thanks very much. Councillor Clayton, any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Platt? Uh, thanks, Mayor Gwynn. It's I guess it's somewhat to this one because because we I appreciate switching the order, but sometimes because we're switching the order, there you know IPS could go two or three hours, or this one could go two or three hours. I guess what I'm wondering, or this may be more of a question for administration because it has happened a few times. What do we do in the absence of all four of these, and, and or, you know, if all four of them end up running late? And, and I guess what's happened a couple of times, we've had a couple run late, and we're watching our staff sit through lunch, not take a pee break, you know, kind of like I just wondering how administration is going to. You know, we, we, we might get through all four of those committees in two hours. We might be here six hours. I'm just wondering what the, the thought is on, on what if it goes long and are we going to schedule in a break and we're going to ask people to come back. I, I really like the intent of getting it all together. I think it's great. I just think there's the misses of how we get the scheduling figured out and what we do in the, the, the you know, or I just, yeah. Administration, maybe ask that one or answer that one. Sure. Yeah, so I'll uh, maybe look to the city clerk and potentially to the city manager. I think that there's at least an element of agenda management and load management uh, that administration can undertake when they're looking at committee agendas um, and make some decisions about um, what the relative load is um, and whether items could be deferred to a subsequent council meeting or committee meeting. Um, I see um, both are ready to go, and maybe I'll default to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is, uh, we have been trying to estimate. Uh, times um, during this pilot uh, uh, time, um, which is very unpredictable, is, is sometimes the, the, the discussion time uh, which is needed. Um, and that's purely up to uh, council members. Um, what we can, we can see if we go past lunch, then to probably incorporate a break for lunch mm -hmm. and continue after, after lunch, which um, We'll, we'll have to manage the Tuesday afternoons or after lunch uh, in our calendars accordingly. So probably it's a little bit of a trial and error. We can, we, I think we have been tracking duration, Erlene, of the meetings so far. So we can see how many instances um, as part of this combined committee system went through lunch and uh, past that uh, to see, you know, if it's a is a rare occurrence or if more a frequent event. Um, I don't remember how many times we went past lunch, but uh, it's, it's not the norm, I would say. It's not the norm, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's doable. We need to, to adjust that a little bit. Thank you, Mayor Given. It is also <clears throat> the um, at the purview of a committee meeting that the chair um, can uh, ask its committee to uh, adjust an agenda. So there is the agenda management side of a committee meeting as well. So if you feel there is an opportunity where your meeting will go longer than your committee um, anticipates, then it is at the right of that assembly to postpone items to a future committee meeting. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Plot, and then we'll go to uh, the Community Services Director, Councillor Plot. Um, I guess on that, what I'm wondering is maybe if we should have one outstanding items list broken into those four buckets. And the reason I'm saying that is some t some of the times things get put onto an outside item item list. You might not be on that committee personally, and then you're wondering okay, somebody's this one's going to get deferred back, and and maybe a, a more of a I guess a, a group effort on that is when things go on the oil that we're almost setting administration up of when those are going to happen. I, I also speak of the other way is I think there's frustration sometimes when somebody goes, oh, wow, that's taking you guys six weeks to do because they thought it should be a one-week thing. And I'd hate to see that get to where we get to where it's finally going to show up on a committee meeting and go, oh, today's not the day for that because we need to manage our time better. We're going to punt that two more weeks. So, you know, I'll, I'll just throw it out more for a comment, but I think, it, you know, maybe some management of how we do the outside of items list collective approach could be a little bit better because I, I don't know if, uh, 
we're not on all, all the committees, so we don't maybe sometimes understand that one outstanding items list might be really piled up and might need to have a more agenda time to get through it, and and that may impact some of the things that go on the other outstanding items list. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, thanks, Mayor Given. I just wanted to make sure that Council was aware that um, we have been trying to notify delegations of the start time. So if community living is 1030, we let them know you don't have to show up before that time. We may have missed it with the last meeting. And uh, also wanted to mention we did offer to the delegation at the last meeting that we'll reschedule for a future meeting if they didn't, because uh, it was going on longer than we anticipated. But they chose to uh, just remain and uh, and present last week. So. Okay. Okay, so right now uh, we have uh, Councillor Clayton's motion on the floor, which was to reflect the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee as being the first of the day. Uh, is there any other discussion or debate on that motion? Sorry, thank you, thank you, thank you, followed by Community Services. Uh, any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, were there any other items uh, that any council member wished to amend in the procedure bylaw? Council Bressy. Uh, I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, what something that we haven't that we haven't talked about was the movement to council being in the afternoon and in the evening and splitting it like that instead of having it at six. And I'm just, I'm just curious how that's working for working for other people. I know that it hasn't necessarily been working great for me from uh, balancing other professional commitments and, fa and balancing a family family commitments, which is always concerning when it's a part-time job, but at the same time, I'm just one guy on council and I'm curious how it's been working for other people. Sure. Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Um, yeah, so recognizing that the procedure bylaw came direct to council and not through standing committee, we didn't have as much opportunity for dialogue and discussion on the specifics of it. And so uh, appreciate that there's not a specific amendment at this stage, although discussion could lead to that. Um, so a, a question to other council members, Councillor Palat. Um, I, I guess, thanks, Mary Gibbon. I think for me, at first when this happened, I, I was, let's let's give it a try. I wanted to support administration on it, and it, it was a change. Um, having said that, uh, it's it's worked on my schedule, and I'm, I'm fine with the change. I, what I see is I, I like that administration has the ability to sometimes be out of here by 5 o'clock, where if we start at 6, we're asking them to be here till 8 or 9 or 10 o'clock some nights. And so I think for me, um, I can appreciate this as a change on all of our lifestyles somewhat. Maybe you're not picking your kids up from school, you're tucking them in a bed sort of a thing, but um, I, I think this is working better for administration and I guess, you know, not to put words in their mouth, my, my question is to see, um, it, I'll, I'll leave it at that because administration's already recommending it or else they wouldn't think this should be here. So I'll just leave it at that, but that's my two bits on it is I think we should be respectful to administration's time on this as well. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my comments basically that I know that Tuesdays are my day that I'm going to be concentrating on council stuff. I can write that in my agenda and that's dealt with. And uh, we did get voted on to council to make sure that we do a good job. And uh, that's a priority in my life. And I think that's one of those things that I look forward to is making sure that I'm av available on Tuesdays. Uh, I'm a little bit different situation that uh, Mr. Bressy is in. My family's growing up, but uh, uh, in the end, I think it works best for me the way it is now. And uh, if I have the opportunity to attend other committee meetings uh, that I'm not appointed to, that option is there. So it works great for me. Okay. Thanks, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, I'll say that I'm, I continue to be supportive of the change. I think it's actually worked out relatively well uh, on a personal level. I think it will, uh, for future councils, uh, knowing what it is, uh, they'll be able to sort of structure their council commitment around that, like understanding what the system looks like. Um, I think that has worked relatively well. And again, I'm not uh, particularly concerned about um, if at some point we wish to change it, we can. Um, and uh, if a future council wishes to change it, certainly they can as well. And so I'm comfortable with how it is. Okay. I don't. See, so, is there any other discussion or any other uh, items arising? If there are none, then we had a number of amendments. Uh, sure, City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Given. I have been um, informed that there is one more small 
minor housekeeping amendment to make to the procedure bylaw before you pass it. And it's <laughs> under item 1.10 that is the definition of the corporate leadership team. I failed to include the city manager in that definition. So I would like to make a friendly <laughs> amendment. <laughs> Talk, talk about a career-limiting move, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Exclude the city manager from CLT. Uh, is there a council member that would wish to make that amendment to incorporate that change? <laughs> Councilor Bressy. I have no idea what the record is for most amendments on a single bylaw already, but I am going for that record, so I would love to so move. Okay, thanks very much. Um, any discussion or debate on that amendment? Seeing none, it looks like... Uh, everybody is ready to vote on that idea of the city manager being part of the CLT. We'll see how it goes. Please vote. Congratulations to the CAO. Welcome to the team. Um, then, if those are all the amendments, I believe those are amendments to second reading. I remember where we were way back at the start of this. Uh, so then I will call for the vote on second reading as amended. Any discussion or debate on second reading as amended? Seeing none, call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, can I have a motion to have third and final reading? Can I have a motion to have third and final reading? Looking for just one of you. Council Bressy. Sure, I would move that council have third and final reading at this meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Bressy. So this is a motion to have third and final uh, reading. This must pass unanimously. I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Council Bressy, would you care to make the motion for third and final reading? Sure, I would move that council give third and final reading to this bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, and that should handle our piece of deferred business uh, and take us to council member reports. And we'll go to Councilor O'Toole for the Combative Sports Commission. Councilor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, on November 8th, uh, XFFC will be having their 23rd event in Grand Prairie, and it'll be at the Revolution Place. And uh, I just wanted to give you a little background uh, from when I went to the ABC conference, uh, some of the things that we accomplished, and I also want to bring up uh, the pursuit of excellence as well. So uh, we had a, I personally sat down with the Vice President of Regulatory Affairs with the UFC Championship. Uh, he, prior to that, was the Executive Director of Nevada State Athletic Commission. Our conversation lasted almost two hours, and uh, he heard about Grand Prairie. And this is a guy that travels all over the world hosting events. And when we... Uh, talked he wanted to know more about Grand Prairie and I says what do you want to know about Grand Prairie for he says well you never know we might be there and uh, so we don't promote any promoters to come to Grand Prairie but uh, in the event uh, it was interesting that he knew a lot about us so with that um, there's been a lot of people that have a lot of athletes who gained direct success because of the combative sports in Grand Prairie uh, we've had uh, Alex Martinez, he's fought three times in Grand Prairie, went out uh, to try for UFC and is currently fighting for Brave FC in Europe. Uh, this last weekend, he won in, uh, in Abu Dhabi on the weekend to remain the undefeated professional that he is. And uh, he got funding at an earlier age in life uh, through the pursuit of excellence. Uh, Spencer Jeb, another... Uh, Pursuit of Excellent uh, re uh, recipient, fought three times in Grand Prairie, moved on to train with George's St. Pierre at TriStar Gym in Montreal, and he fights with the M1 Global in Russia, uh, winning his last bout. 
we brought in Jaron Valer, uh, main trainer for the ABC officials, both referee and judge. He's worked in Grand Prairie and was overwhelmingly impressed with the organization and remains close to as a close resource to our commission. And f for any needs, uh, uh, you can ask him for his perspective and situations as well. Uh, he's uh, became a bit of a close friend, uh, but uh, he's one of the main dudes, you want to call him that, uh, with the ABC. Uh, several athletes have competed here in Grand Prairie. We've had 25 events since 2011. There's been no major injuries, uh, severe medical conditions caught in pre-fight process. So we've had to cancel fights because the paperwork wasn't completed. And as research went on, we found out that uh, some people were having life-altering diseases or uh, issues with their body. And uh, one person, because of our influence in his life at that point in time, required heart surgery. So the medical exams that we perform uh, or have get performed are very important to the athletes. Commission is more than just fighting, it's relationships, uh, safety, business, and most of all, the respect of in every aspect is mentioned. Grand Prairie has seen 250 fights with no incidents. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that uh, the commission is strong, well-liked, uh, great respect uh, throughout the combative sports commission or combative sports world. And uh, it was a pleasure walking in and having the guy from New York State Commission or the Calgary or the California State Commission welcome you into the hotel that the event is at and uh, wanted to know what's going on. So we got a good, uh, we got good stuff happening here. Great. Thanks Thank you. Very much, Council O'Toole. Uh, I don't believe there are any reports from our other external agencies, boards, or commissions, unless one of you missed one. Uh, and with that being the case, then we'll start Council Roundtable with Councillor Thiessen. Oh, you guys want to be here all night, eh? Oh, let's get my pretty face in there. There it is. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, uh, I've had uh, the luxury of uh, being uh, very, 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 very busy uh, doing Deputy Mayor duties as well as uh, AUMA conference. Uh, I have to say, uh, the AUMA conference is really, really good, but a highlight for me was getting to sit with Councillor Bressey with uh, the Honourable uh, Minister of Environment and Parks, uh, Mr. Jason Nixon, and his team from the province, as well as sitting in and around a table with the uh, Mayor of Calgary, Nahad Nenshi, as well as one of the councillors, Ben Henderson, representing the City of Edmonton and FCM as well, to discuss important issues. Um, one of the highlights of that for me, though, was uh, watching Councillor Bressy in action, like really attacking the subjects whenever he had an opportunity. And I got my own two two words in there, here and there as well. But Councillor Bressy was very, very impressive. And I was like a proud parent there, even though I'm not old enough to be his dad. That would be weird. Uh, but I was a proud parent watching him in action and uh, even uh, made Ms. Minister Nixon uh, take note that uh, about his passion and, uh, and uh, his love for our community and representing it well. So... I was happy to be in that room with you, Councillor Bressy. Thank you very much. Uh, from there, I came back to uh, do some deputy mayor duties, but I got to be a part of uh, several awesome events. I'm not going to list them all off because I know there's other council members that were at some of these events as well, and I think we should share. Um, so uh, I will say uh, that uh, I had the opportunity to MC the fifth uh, TEDx uh, Grand Prairie event here in Grand Prairie that took place at the beautiful John Paul II uh, Theater. Uh, now, I've talked about TED before. We know our, our Leicester City Manager has been a speaker. Councillor Eunice Friesen has been a speaker. Myself has been a speaker. And the man who put together the affordable housing strategy, uh, Mr. Reed DeRoche, was the originator, the original promoter of that. Uh, and it has carried on into its fifth installment. And I think I'm the only one left, having emceed four of them and spoken at one of them. So I feel pretty blessed. Now, there's a lot of really great speakers, but I have to be honest, I was really, really touched. Uh, there was, uh, as an addition to the, to the TED event, at the intermission, we had a performance art piece by Miss Serena Love, uh, who did live on art stage. Uh, she was working on it behind the curtain before the intermission, and we opened it up. And then her friend Kevin Shore wheeled his bike and all of his belongings uh, onto the stage and sat down at a piano and started by playing O Canada and then played Bach and Mozart and 
a bunch of other really classical composition pieces, which is really, really cool. But it's even cooler when you understand that Mr. Kevin Shore is one of our homeless population who lives uh, in, in the wilderness. He also keeps all of his tools and his ladder and everything in there to help him do yard maintenance and work uh, for businesses and individuals around the community. Uh, and was actually a really cool guy. So as the MC, I had a small write-up for him. And so I asked him if it was okay. And then I got to ask him a little bit more questions about his housing situation. Uh, and he said, well, he's been homeless now for about four months. Uh, he had housing, but uh, unfortunately he got kicked out, uh, invited the wrong friends over, and they made a ruckus. And he lost his housing and due to a lack of available spaces for people in his predicament, despite the fact that he's a hardworking man uh, and quite a piano player. Uh, he couldn't find a place uh, due to not enough services, not enough available spaces, stuff that we're going to be talking about here in a couple weeks and that we've been talking about for years about what we need to do now. But it really, really touched me because I said, well, Kevin, you got none of these services. Like, how do you, how do you keep up? Like living in the bush and playing the, the piano key ivories because you can also see him at the farmer's market playing on the piano there. You can see him at She Will Studios downtown. He plays there quite consistently. And he said, you know, it's pretty bad that I live in the bush, I guess, some people might think. Um, but I don't let that get me down. Every morning I take a breath and I thank God for that breath because life is a gift and I'm thankful for being here. And I'm thankful for being where I am because, of course, I have a house over my head and family and friends and have the opportunity to help make a difference in people's lives, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, so for him, as he said those words to me, I, I almost cried because it really touched my soul. And then when I read it again uh, as an MC to the audience, I almost cried again because it had such an impact. And I find myself here with water filling up my eyes, so maybe he really did get deep down into me. So to Kevin Shore, um, hopefully we will make the right decisions to help you find a place to utilize your talents and to find a warm place over your head. We'll do that sooner rather than later. But with that all being said, I do have one final bit um, to say. Never doubt the impact that you have on other people's lives, no matter how big or how small or how rich or how poor you are, because we all have the ability to impact each other in incredible ways. And uh, that makes us all pretty blessed and fortunate. And speaking of being blessed and fortunate, I'm looking at this big trophy in front of me. I had to clean off my shelf to make room for it. You know, there just wasn't enough room on Chris Thiessen's trophy shelf case on it. So I opened up some space to be a little bit thankful for the people in my life uh, who, uh, who surround me, my council family. Uh, and I thought being at it's our organizational meeting next week and we're going to do the old shuffle and the receipt, I figured it might be a great opportunity to present as a councillor the first ever MVC Councillor of the Year Award to one of my fellow council mates. Now, the Councillor of the Year Award Councillor, Councillor Thiessen, this is an opportunity to describe events that council members have attended representing the city of Grand Prairie. I appreciate the good nature and the spirit of the direction that you're going, um, but we are here to report on things where we represent the city of Grand Prairie and our council colleagues out in the community. For sure, and that's what I'm here to say, Mayor Given. So I would appreciate the time that you've given me. So. In speaking to uh, my council mates, I would like to award an award. I think we're all deserving of an award, but uh, for one councillor, and it was pretty close. I looked at everybody on the council and it was actually separated by about 0.3 of a percentage between first and second. So I have our, our councillor of the year. This councillor always participates in conversations at meetings, sometimes proposes amendments that I sometimes don't support is a dependable person who represents our community well in all the things that they do, both local and abroad, is genuine, kind, intelligent, and thoughtful, and if there is something happening in or around the community, chances are this person is there. So, in light of time, I will just put the trophy up here and I'll present it later to the most valuable counselor of the year. It was close, but counselor Kevin O'Toole, 
because you do so many good things in our community, I will give you my little award. And the runner-up, actually, uh, was uh, Councillor Dylan Bressy. You get the most enthusiastic Councillor of the Year award, and I'll present those to you later. Thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Plott. I was going to go long today, but I'm not thinking I'm going to go that long in my presentation, but that was pretty heartfelt and pretty cool. So thanks for that, Councillor Thiessen. Um, I had, uh, I guess we all had AMA, so I want to thank the uh, councillors that I had the opportunity to go down on a road trip. That was very memorable, and I'm sure we'll always have some stories for, for friends and family for years to come for that one. Um, the highlight uh, of one of the events I did that was actually the Aquaterra plant tour that uh, I did with Councillor Bressy and Councillor O'Toole. It just made me a lot more confident that uh, that our that Aquaterra's did. I always thought they did a great job, but I'm a lot more confident now that they we're set up as a community for now and for a long time. And Councillor Bressy had made a comment there that he talked to a, a mayor out of Hinton and said, "Boy, I don't think about water anymore." And it's it's not something I'd thought about until Councillor Bressy said that. It's something as big as water. We've never had to really discuss it as a council in two years, and so I'm pretty grateful for that. So I I think we're in a, we're in great shape for them moving forward. Um, the other thing that I thought was really cool is I had my opportunity to have a phone call with Tracy Lawrence and that we all probably had. And it was something that council undertook where we uh, did a peer review of each other. And at the end of the call, I asked Tracy if that's something that's very common. And she said, no, not at all. And, I, and, I, and it made me very proud of our group. I know that sometimes we bang heads here and we don't agree. Today, today was a tough one. Um, but I love that we're in a spot that we're comfortable enough and confident enough with each other that we can say, what, hey, what I like about you and here's something I think you'd like to improve. And, I, and I'm... I'm really grateful that we had that opportunity with Tracy, and I think that's something that we should be proud of as a council because that's not something a lot of councils have. So I, you know, I want to take a moment to reflect that. And uh, at that, I'll, I'll, I don't have any words, so I'll, I'll, I'll let it go over here. Thanks, <laughs> Councillor Plott. Councillor Friesen. Thanks, Mayor Given. I've had among the best uh, two weeks of my council experience, and I, I don't know where to begin. I usually pick one thing that hasn't previously been... Um, commented on, but I can't decide on. I, I got to, um, again, help out with Tiny Hands of Hope, the walk to remember. Uh, I want to shout out to Alberta, the province of Alberta for Alberta Culture Days. This year I got to try my hand at paper making. I won't be trying again. I have other talents. <laughs> um, I attended a Czech presentation. Thank you, Rotary Club of Grand Prairie, for your uh, continued commitment to uh, some of the initiatives that are important to City Council as well. I got to attend uh, Joy Chapel th this uh, past week and just had a blast visiting with uh, our persons with developmental disabilities who meet on a Thursday night, sometimes 150 or 200 of them, um, for dinner and church. It's fantastic. I attended the unveiling of the Sisters in Spirit Memorial Walk and uh, Memorial Rock prior to the memorial, annual memorial walk. And it's a beautiful depiction of a jingle dancer and an ins inscription uh, um, reminding us of our missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited individuals. And the Volunteer Services Bureau is 50 years old in our community, and I got to plant a tree that didn't blow away, and neither did I, much to my... Surprise, it was, um, oh, and oh, Friends of Grand Spirit Foundation Harvest Dinner. It just was really a fantastic couple of weeks. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Minhas. Thank you, Will Mergevin. Um, AGMA was very interesting. We had lots to meet and greet, and it was a good part of it. The uh, new government brought quite a few MLAs and ministers to meet, and uh, thanks to Shane. And it was great introduction, but we're still feeling like to have worked with them more harder. Uh, beside that, um, we went to uh, the grand opening for Windsor Ford, and there was $35 million building and 134 bays for service. It was a great event, and the um, mayor had a good speech there, and proud to be in the grand period. That's it, the third generation, they're carrying on the business. And then we went to the GP, our library, 80th year anniversary. I call it anniversary or birthday. <laughs> birthday, I don't know. So it was very good. There were quite a few people were there. And then also the thanks to the mayor, Bill Gibbon again for the million dollar Rotary and uh, Rotary Club 
uh, give the money that was a great event. That's about it I have. Thank you. Thanks, Councilman Haas. Councilman. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, most of the items have been mentioned. I will just uh, um, mention a couple other little ones. I attended um, parts of the Rotary Conference uh, that was uh, held at Evergreen Park. Uh, the Rotary District Conference highlighted some exceptional speakers. It also had over 500 attendees. It was one of the largest conferences put on in, in the district. So uh, special thanks to the organizers and, and the Rotary Clubs that and the Rotarians that supported that event. Uh, it was, uh, the parts I attended were great. As well, I attended the uh, opening reception for Archives at Work that uh, was put on at the, hosted at the Grand Prairie Museum, put on by the Archives Society. Um, Hardworking group of people, very passionate about uh, um, the work they do. And so that was uh, nice to see that group. And then on this last week and Saturday night, I think there was four events in Grand Prairie that evening. Um, I was fortunate to attend the uh, annual Nighthawk Comedy um, fundraiser. Oversold, so packed event. Uh, so congratulations to the the organizers for that event, uh, as usual, the comedy is sometimes funny and sometimes inappropriate, but uh, overall, I think they, I don't know the numbers yet, but I think they did well. So uh, congratulations to the organization for the for their efforts. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I too want to uh, speak highly of the AUMA and the road trip going there and the road trip coming back. Uh, while we were down there, we got to meet. Uh, it was one of the, I think, the one of the most uh, attended by MLAs and M, uh, ministers that I can recall, and they were all very much available to bend an ear, and uh, not only just the one day, but on a number of days. So that was great. Um, I attended on the 30th Culture Week. Uh, and there was a film festival, you might say, of locally produced films at the GPLT. And one of the ones that was there was one that I supported uh, by being part of is Lost. And the other one that I want to bring up is uh, Giant Wood. And it's the elevator story in Sexsmith. And if you get a chance to see that, I don't know if it's on any of the social media stuff, but very, very down-to-earth uh, start with uh, that sexsmith had nine elevators at one time and uh, we're down to one but uh, it's it's very encouraging because some of the people that worked in those elevators were interviewed and uh, kind of uh, it's it's uh, it's history uh, also I uh, I want to talk a little bit about the 3d hockey news conference where uh, Darren Foley has been running this uh, uh, fundraiser for a number of years. I won't get into the details, but this year uh, he's invited Lanny McDonald and Paul Coffey, in case you're wondering, they're hockey players, um, really good hockey players, and also Ron McLean, and they'll be having a uh, an event here later this year. And uh, also, just on the sadness side of things, uh, attended the funeral for Roy Borstead. And uh, when you talk about minor hockey and minor ball, he was the founding father, I would say, uh, very, very well uh, supportive of all those sports. Not only that, he was a businessman for a number of years in the city of Grand Prairie. As, and so uh, he, I, I worked with him on a couple of boards myself. So with all that, uh, that is my report, sir. Great, thank you. I'll, uh, two that I'll share is one, I got to, along with Councillor Thiessen, attend Orange Shirt Day. And that event's always a privilege to attend and also always a sobering one to attend. And uh, part of what happens is you get to hear speakers who talk about the past impact of residential schools, the current impact of residential schools, and the future impact of residential schools. And this year we heard from one individual who went to residential schools and watched in front of her eyes classmates get beaten, watch have classmates disappear and wonder what happened to those classmates and then a couple decades later uh, find out that bones of other children were found at her school and heartbreaking story to hear we heard from another speaker who had cousins that were her age and younger taken off to residential school she was saved but she watched cousins go and come back and be very changed by that and I think that as we're talking 
today we talked a little bit about next steps with land acknowledgement and that's an important part of reconciliation and Orange Shirt Day was a really important reminder that reconciliation isn't just about talking about what's happened in history, but what's happening in our community right now. So Orange Shirt Day, I don't know if it's, it's not a fun event, although the stew and the fellowship at the end of it is always great. It's a sobering event, but I think it's a very valuable one that is worth checking out if you've never checked it out before. Uh, on a lighter note, I also got to attend the Air Cadets Wings Parade. This is... Uh, Air Force tradition where pilots are traditionally given their wings and in Air Cadets, it's, they're recognized for promotions and for training certifications they've received. And I got to be the inspecting officer, so I got to go along with the CO and watch every uniform get, get nitpicked. And boy, it sure made me self-conscious about the suit I was wearing. And then I got to talk a little bit about Air Cadets and how I believe that they really do have a lot of the values of Grand Prairie in terms of their young people that volunteer in their community, that have adult officers that care for them, they're disciplined, they work hard. It was a great privilege. And I thought the most interesting part about it was our Air Cadets here have a drone program where they get to learn how to fly drones. And what's unique about that is that's not helping, happening elsewhere in Canada. They're piloting that. And the way technology is going, I'll bet you, I'd be very surprised if in five, ten years that's not a nationwide, just a regular thing that you do at Air Cadets. And it's really cool that that's another example of how Grand Prairie is leading the way. So I was really proud of those young people, and I was really proud of their officers. So that was a great privilege to attend. Thanks, Councillor Bessie. Uh, I'll just report on a couple of items uh, that uh, other council members uh, didn't participate in. Uh, so in addition to uh, speaking at some of the other events that were mentioned, um, I had a conference call with uh, Mayor Rebecca Alti from the City of Yellowknife to talk about issues of mutual concern and uh, where we may have an opportunity to, to collaborate together in the future. I participated in a radio interview for CBC's Radioactive Program with respect to uh, housing in the community of Grand Prairie. Uh, I joined the Minister of Advanced Education on a tour of Grand Prairie Regional College to speak about the importance of the college and its transition to degree granting status to our community. Uh, I also had an opportunity to meet with some representatives from Mexico, um, mayor and uh, chief um, municipal lawyer from a com community in Mexico uh, who are in Grand Prairie for the Rotary District Convention. Um, they had a particular interest. Their community of 16,000 people uh, does not currently have a fire service. Uh, they received fire service from about 25 minutes away, and so they were uh, particularly interested in that. And so I want to thank the members of our Grand Prairie Fire Department for allowing us to come over and make an impromptu visit to Station 3. I have to admit, it's probably a little bit of showing off, considering it's the most impressive station that we have, but th they certainly appreciated seeing uh, the way that our department operates and the specialization approach that our department has taken. And so I want to thank uh, administration staff for being able to line that up so we could uh, host our visitors well. Uh, my congratulations um, to uh, the entire Windsor Ford family uh, and the long mates uh, for the opening of their new facilities mentioned by Councillor Minhas, um, the largest Ford dealership in Canada in Grand Prairie and certainly uh, should be a source of pride for our entire community. When I mentioned that our retail market analysis saw that we have a region of, of just under 300,000, um, Charles Longmate got up to speak afterwards and he said, well, geez, if I would have known that, I would have made it bigger. Um, Charles, I guess, you, you know, you missed your opportunity. Um, but I think it speaks to the strength of uh, our local entrepreneurs and the commitment they have to this community and the fact that they have a lot of confidence in the future of Grand Prairie. I can appreciate that from time to time it can be difficult to be confident in the future of our community and its growth. Um, but I think a decision like uh, that to invest in the largest Ford dealership in Canada in Grand Prairie doesn't come lightly um, and it really speaks to uh, a tremendous confidence in the future of Grand Prairie in our region. Um, and then finally, to close, I just wanted to also, uh, I wasn't able to attend the funeral, but I also wanted to add just on behalf of myself and, and maybe all of council, if I could, in the city of Grand Prairie, our condolences to the Borstad family. Obviously, Roy's brother um, was a uh, former mayor of the city of Grand Prairie as well, Elmer. Um, but Roy himself was a real true partner uh, in the region, having sat on uh, county council for a number of terms. Um, and he was also the reeve when uh, the city of Grand Prairie, the town of Sexsmith, and the county of Grand Prairie form, joined to form Aquaterra. And so obviously played an important role in the lives of uh, people on a social aspect in terms of sport, um, but on a structural aspect in terms of his role in governance in the region uh, has uh, he took a hand in um, things that will have a, a lasting contribution to our region. And so obviously our uh, condolences go to uh, the Borsed family um, and all those who knew Roy. And with that, we'll call our meeting adjourned.